Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Marion Brothers High School for the 6th Annual Boston Lax All-American All-Star Lacrosse Game. This game being played in honor of the Bruce Fund, in memory of Bruce Lurch, whose dream was Boston Lax, and he will forever live in our hearts and our minds. Tonight, we are fortunate to have several sponsors we want to quickly mention, STX, CFS, we'll mention those during the course of the event. We ask that you consider those people in your purchases and needs for services. So with no further ado, let's meet our All-Americans from the best of Massachusetts. Starting with the dark team. From the dark team coached by head coach Matt Rowley and the Noble and Greeno staff. From Noble, number six, Hayden Creek. From Tabor, number 19, Patrick Daly. From Belmont Hill, number two, Jake Haas. From Franklin High School, number six, Eric Savetti. <laughs> From Hingham High School, number one, Ryan Hill. From Boston College High School, number six, Aiden Carroll. From Marlboro High School, number 18, Dom Carter. From Acton Boxborough Regional High School, number 28, Jake Erickson. From Noble, number 13, Chet Zama. From Rivers, number 18, Tommy Benjes. From Hingham, number 22, Jake Quilty. From St. Sebastian, number 22, Matt DeSisto. Now here this evening from St. Sebastian's High School, Will Plansky. From Cohasset High School, number 11, Will Thomas. From Long Little High School, number four, Spencer Robbins. From Governor's Academy, number 26, Luke Moriarty. From St. Sebastian, number two, Will Frisoli. From St. Sebastian, number 15, Cam Martin. From Medfield High School, number 36, John Schofield. From Melrose High School, number one, Cam Rosie. From Nobles High School, number 19, Andrew Johnson. From Brooks, number eight, Mike Hughes. From Wayland High School, number five, Kyle Camphausen. From the host teams, the Varian Brothers High School, number 11, Sean Nizolak. From Franklin High School, number two, Jacob Alexander. From Nobles, number 21, John Dixon. From Foxborough High School, number 34, Jake Adigi. From Roxbury Latin, numbers, number zero, Devin Barney. And from Concord Carlisle High School, number three, Ben Catcher. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dark Team Team Shield. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce Team Hammer wearing the white jerseys, coached by head coach Steve Lydon and the Boston College High School staff. From Governor's Academy, number four, ja Zach Ludd. From Westwood High School, number nine, Jake Antonucci. From Needham High School, number 19, Jason Child. From Lincoln Sudbury High School, number 24, Matt Ward. From Zavarian Brothers High School, number three, Sam Jean. From Long Middle High School, number 16, Jack Barron. From Zona Sherborne Regional High School, number 22, Jack Dillon. From Hingham High School, number 16, Marshall Terrence. From the Noble School, number 10, Nick Loring. From Governor's Academy, number 33, Brendan Jordan. From Falmouth High School, number three, Colin Almeida. 
from Hockington High School, number 22, Will Abbott. From Groton Dunstable Regional High School, number 12, Liam McDonough. From Reading Memorial High School, wearing number one in honor of his injured teammate, Michael Tobin, number 21, Jack Geiger, wearing number one. From Situate High School, number 25, Dave Murray. From Wellesley High School, number 14, Michael Bones. From Walpole High School, number two, Robert Colburn. From Boston College High School, number 44, Tommy Joyce. From Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School, number 14, Peter Rosati. From Duxbury High School, number 18, Cole Biggins. From Del Delmont Hill School, number 6, Max Fields. From Boston College High School, number 26, Martin Bowen. From Shrewsbury High School, number 9, Chris Campbell. From the host schools of Marion Brothers High School, number 25, Dylan Gardner. From Governor's Academy, number 18, Nate Lullaberti. From Hingham High School, number 33, Frankie Higgins. From Belmont Hill School, number 27, Danny Hanks. From St. Sebastian School, number 21, Alex Gain. And from Cohasset High School, Number eight, Mason Fitzgerald. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the white uniforms, Team Hammer. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 All-American All-Star Game rosters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we ask you please rise. We will be caps in honor of our great nation as we honor those who defend our freedom with the playing of our national anthem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zavarian Brothers High School in Westwood, Massachusetts for the 2018 Boston Laxnet All-American Game. It's the sixth annual. We're here for you on a beautiful Monday night, July 9th. Temperatures are on 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. I'm Jake Levin of Boston Laxnet and the Boston Globe alongside Daggett Morse, the defensive coordinator at Medfield High School. The perennial power, the little engine that couldn't have sense here in the Tri-Valley League. Daggett, welcome aboard. Happy to be back. Had a great time doing this uh, last year. Not dodging any weather this year. Couldn't be a nicer night. Should be awesome to watch these guys get after it. Daggett, we've got 36 or so of the very best high school lacrosse players in the state of Massachusetts coming from really all across the state, every division of the MIAA, as well as the ISL. Uh, you have schools like Nobles, very well represented, of course, with four. They were the ISL champions after all this year. You've got BC High well represented, Cohasset, Redding, Hingham, St. Sebastian's. So the list goes on and on for just some great lacrosse players, many of whom are going on to play at the next level, and this is the last time they will ever be in their high school uniforms. Great day for those guys, and where else are you going to see some of the best in the ISL play on the same field as some of the best in the MIAA? Um, I don't know if we're ever going to get lucky enough to get a game that counts for that, but this is as close as we can get, and just 
just loaded rosters left, right, and center with these guys. So, like I said, we're here at the Hawk Bowl. We've got a couple of guys playing on their home field. That'd be Sam Jean, of course, for Zverian, the outstanding attack. And the defenseman, Sean Nizolik, another senior for the Hawks. Good season for Zverian. They fell in the Division I South quarterfinal. Uh, pardon that semifinal it was to hang them. So they're getting one last chance here on their home turf. And, hey, there can only be a couple of champions. BC High won the Division I title. Reading won the Division II title. Cohasset Division Three, And Nobles, as we mentioned earlier, VISL. So we're going to get set for our opening draw. Nate Liberty out of Govs is going to be taking it for Team Hammer. And it looks like for Team Shield, that is Jacob Alexander, the junior, believe he's committed to Rutgers. Don't quote me on that. I know that seems to be the Franklin thing as Alexander wins the draw. He flings it up and scoring early right off the bat is, uh, pardon me, Pat Daly of Tabor. Looking at the wrong roster there. It is 1-0 Team Shield just a couple seconds into the game. Early action here. Um, believe uh, Franklin's face guy is Bryant, I think, off Bryant. the top of my head. Yes. If I can jump in there. I think it's Savetti Rutgers right. and he's Bryant. Um, should be an outstanding battle between all these face-off guys at the X and we're going to have no shortage of offense here. Clock didn't even run on that first <laughs> goal. Scored in, scored in zero seconds here. Alexander is that fast and I guess Daly's shot is that quick. We'll reset and do it again. Liberty well regarded as one of the best face-off men, if not in the ISL, the entire state of Massachusetts and uh you know, maybe even the entire country. I know Ryan Killian, our editor-in-chief of Boston Laxnet, speaks very highly of Nate Liberty. Uh, in his class, absolutely is. His freshman year, he was at Pinkerton Academy out of New Hampshire. Uh, we actually saw him, and he spent the evening abusing our upperclassmen, you know, a junior and a senior. You know, as a freshman, transferred into Govs and had an outstanding year. Uh, there's not enough good things you can say about his game. If I recall, you guys wound up winning that game. That would have been the spring of 2017. That was Owen Murphy's double OT winner. It will. I don't mind talking about that one. That's a game we can talk about tonight. <laughs> I've gotten to see a lot of Medfield games through the years here with Boston Lax. Eight-time Division II state champion, or eight-time state champion in the last several at the Division II ranks. There's, there's a D3 snuck in there at the front <laughs> before my time, thankfully. John Isif. The head coach at Medfield does an outstanding job. The Tri-Valley League, one of the more underrated leagues in terms of high school lacrosse. Beyond Medfield, you have Westwood, you have Hopkinton. You're going to see a couple players from those programs tonight. Will Abbott, one of the only three-sport all-scholastics you'll see. Uh, he was recognized as such by the Boston Herald in uh, Daggett. He wasn't just a three-sport all-scholastic. He was a three-sport all-scholastic in football, hockey, and lacrosse. The three physical grinding sports. Absolutely, and, you know, two-time MVP, you know, he was TVL MVP for football, TVL MVP for hockey. Uh, he was only Offensive Player of the Year in spring, <laughs> mostly due to, to a hamstring injury that kind of knocked his production down a little bit. He was so close to the Triple Crown there, which is unheard of. Zach Ludd for Govs misses his connection in front of the net. That's going to be scooped up. Abbott is going to try to scoop it up, those He's in his white uniform tonight. It's a very nice road uniform. And they have those greens with the orange and the white. Looks like the Miami Hurricanes reincarnated. It's a, it's a great color scheme. Can't argue with that. And then I'm talking about TVL lacrosse, and I somehow left off Dover Sherburn, who played for a Division Three title this year, lost to Cohasset. It was Cohasset. It was really their year start to finish down at the Division Three ranks. Didn't lose to a Division Three team all season long. Their only losses up to the D1 powers like you're hanging Cohasset. And that's a save made by Devin Varney. Uh, I stand corrected. They're going to call that one a goal. And that guy that picks up where he left off in the state championship game by scoring. Yep, so a goal by Jack Geiger, who's actually wearing the number one of his teammate. Um, Michael Tobin couldn't be here. He's having surgery on a torn labrum in his shoulder. Obviously, we, we wish him the best. Of course. Nice tribute from a teammate there to don his number for this last game. And Michael Tobin, only a junior. One gets the feeling he'll be back in this game next year. Oh, he certainly should be. And he'll be joining his brother at UMass Amherst, Kevin Tobin, for lacrosse. Also, outstanding hockey player. Got to see him down in Falmouth at the Buddy Ferreira Classic the last several seasons. And be doing that again next year, I would assume. Here's Liberty. Scoops up the X and tries to clear. Jumping that passing lane pretty well. Looked like Will Frasoli 
St. Sebastian's for Soli, a little spin move, gonna fire, and a nice save made by Danny Hanks, the Belmont Hill goaltender. Hanks, I saw him earlier this season against Nobles. He had 10 saves against Nobles. It was in a losing effort for Belmont Hill, but nevertheless, one of the top in that league. Always double digits with him, save-wise. I mean, I can't think of a game where he had fewer than 10, and that's, that's not, a, not a shot at his defense in front of him. He's just that good. About two minutes gone by here in the opening quarter. It's one-to-one -one between Team Hammer and Team Shield. Pat Daly, the goal scorer for Tabor. Or from Tabor, I should say. And, you know, the other goal is uh, not yet on my spreadsheet, but it'll, it'll come in time. Here's Eric Savetti. Savetti has it pop loose. Looks like... That's and Michael Peter Rizzotti knock it free and Bohms, as he said, Michael oh, Bohms fires and scores. Oh, Michael Bohms and Wellesley, we know about their team this year in pulling perhaps the biggest upset of the MIAA tournament in any division, Wellesley over Duxbury. And that's no knock on Wellesley. It was simply a little stunning to see Duxbury out that early. Yeah, I, I Following the score, you know, was in the car, I think, and, and following the end of that game, Bohms himself, I think, had six goals that day. That sounds right, and, and including the game winner including in double OT. Including the game OT. winner, for good measure, of course. Just a, a, a goalie battle, back and forth. Um, you know, Griffin for Duxbury and Darcy for Wellesley, both outstanding goalies. And, you know, Bohms was just the, the hot hand that day. Darcy heading off to Penn State, of course. Unbelievable goalie with an unbelievable story. Oh, it's going to stay team hammer ball. Teammates guarding each other there. Nizalik on Gene. Seen that in practice a few times, I bet. On this very field, no less. It is an exhibition game here, so you wouldn't expect the defenses to be going all out, but there's a nice save by Varney. And I'm simply going by, say, the NBA All-Star Game or the Pro Bowl where defense truly is optional. These polls are looking to score today, too. We've, we've had a, you know, a pretty good track record here of goalie and long pole goals in this game, so I want to see a few more tonight, that's for sure. One pole onto the field, Frankie Higgins. He is heading off to Bucknell University in Pennsylvania. He's a pole who also can excel on the face-off X when need be, and I get the feeling he wants to score tonight. Well, you can talk about a guy who scores. I mean, I... Not sure how many goals exactly he had this year, but he's always a threat to run right down the heart of your defense and stick one. And he's done it to us before. I believe it was against Zavarian in that uh, D1 South quarterfinal game. He won the opening draw, scooped, and scored eight seconds in. Not a guy you want to see running in transition. Neither is number five in black here, Kyle Kamphausen, who just dished that ball off. Another pole who can score. Second goal of the game. Here's our look at Pat Daly from Tabor zigging and zagging his way through the defense. Tying this game at two apiece, three minutes, 18 seconds into the first quarter. Tabor new to the ISL this year after spending many years in a different league and uh, certainly getting used to that upper echelon of the competition there. The Sebs, the Nobles, the Fairs in any given year. Can't leave out governors there. And, of course, Govs. You know, we don't want any phone calls. Always forgetting somebody. Here's Definitely an adjustment moving into that league. <laughs> Here's the Liberty. Great hockey program at Tabor. I'm sure they'll be okay, or they were okay in that regard. School down on the south coast in Marion, Mass. Behind the net, that's Zach Ludd from Govs. He dishes off to Marshall Terez, who feels like he's been playing lacrosse and hockey for about 10 years. Of course, he's a true four-year senior. He is heading off to Colgate University. Scored the game-winning goal in the Division I state championship game as a freshman in hockey. He's hanging beat Arlington Catholic with about a minute and eight seconds left on the clock. Also the quarterback of the football team, just for good measure. And you, you said it. I feel like he's been there for eight or nine years with how good he's been for, for so long. He showed up as a freshman and just physically was ready to play. And I think actually on our first scout against him, we had him as a sophomore or junior. Just flat out missed it. Assumed he couldn't <laughs> possibly be a, a ninth grader. There's a couple guys like that in this game. A lot of opposing coaches will not be sad to see them head off to the collegiate ranks. And there's Terez. 
Spins off a defender. Is going to try to fire, and Varney puts his stick out in front, and it's going to trickle out of the end zone. It'll stay team hammer ball. That's not going in on Varney. No angle. He's way too good for that, even in an exhibition game. You know, you look at the score, 2-2, two -two with eight minutes and change to go in the first quarter, and this would be indicative of a normal, regular game, I guess. You could certainly see four goals in this amount of time. We're easing into it. We have a stick snapped. Somebody's going to have to pick up some loose lumber, get it reattached. I believe that's Dave Murray of Situate. That's a bummer. Maybe Poos will buy him a new one. <laughs> it is Dave Murray indeed. Situate won a thrilling playoff game against Falmouth in the Division II South. I believe that was the Division II South final, 8-7. Murray dished off for the game-winning goal that sank the Clippers. We will see a Clipper in this game, Colin Almeida, at some point. Falmouth high, and he is going to Penn State. There's a shot and a score. I believe that was a Nobles connection there. Jet Ziyama, senior. You don't want to let him shoot with his hands free from 10 yards. That's way too easy. I mean, Nobles had a lot of guys that could sling it, but... He's probably number two right behind Loring. That's a, it's just a bad day if you're a goalie. Four players from Nobles on this roster that's coached by Matt Rowley, the head coach of Team Shield. Yep, good coaching staffs here today, that's for sure. We've got the ISL um, champions, Nobles, and then you have your you know, USA Today National High School Coach of the Year, Steve Lydon, on the opposite sideline. What an honor that is for him. Well deserved. Just the culmination of three years of, uh, more than that, but the last two years coming up short in the Division One title game to Lincoln Sudbury both times. and it, This really felt like the culmination of that cycle, getting the title that uh, those players deserved, I guess, uh, for all the hard work they put in going through just that gauntlet of a bracket year in, year out, only run into a LS team that, well, as you know... <laughs> On another level. They're and this, outstanding. And this year, as soon as they got by Hingham in the South Final, you kind of just knew it was the Eagles' year. I mean, it's the, probably the most dominant playoff run ever in this state. I mean, even during Duxbury's runs of titles, you f I feel like the last game was always a tight one. You know, they, they played a couple close ones against Prep back in the day. BC High just abused the field. It was Really, that Hingham game was... 13-6. to six. That was... A, I didn't see that one coming. And I don't think anyone did. And Hingham got a couple of goals in the fourth quarter to, to make it very interesting at a time. Don't get me wrong. I think it was 9-4 was the closest they got. But 13-6 to six against that Hingham team. Needham, Wellesley beat them by double figures. And then 14-3 over Acton Boxborough. Forget the exact number. I want to say it was 78-25 to 25 as Varney makes it. Looks like it is going to be off the pipe, but nevertheless, Varney stretched out. 78-25 sounds uh, like the right number in my head. BCI outscored its opposition in the postseason. Dominant undersells how good they were. I mean, it's it's too bad we couldn't line up some games at the end of the year. The way they were playing, I don't think they would have looked up to anyone you know, in the, in the country. I'm not saying they're going to beat anyone, but it would have been a hell of a game. I just got to wonder, how did they lose a couple of games in the regular season? It, it's a it's a grind. It's tough to show up on their schedule with who they play. Uh, Bishop Girton, one of those losses. Um, I believe LaSalle Academy out of Rhode Island was the other. And the early one to Zavarian, um, you can throw the records out with Catholic Commerce. Absolutely. Across. I mean, it's, they're all just, it's a slugfest. You know, I think another important thing to remember, it is kids we're talking about. And uh, they're not robots. Oh, what a stop. Varney, remarkable save again. He's putting on a clinic. Putting to rest the notion that this is an offensive showcase as he dished off to Nizolik. Varney didn't show up here to get scored on today. That's for sure. <laughs> Zolik went up the middle. Just looking for Kyle Camphausen out of Wayland. Now up to Daly again of Tabor. He already has a pair, and he's looking for his third, and it's off the side of the goal. First mom goal of the night. <laughs> Scooped up by, I believe that's Hayden Cheek, and this is hard because we have three attacks wearing number six on the dark team, and it's a little hard to differentiate between them, but that is Hayden Cheek, not to be confused with Eric Savetti, who's also out there 
wearing number yeah, six in a navy blue jersey. And some great matchups. You got Cheek on, on Joyce. That's Rosati on Savetti. And I believe that's Gardner right here on the ball right now. I mean, outstanding athletes. The one-on-one -on -one matchups attack for D tonight, you just won't be able to find in any real game. Gardner, a remarkable player on the back end. The son of the head coach, it's very First Tim Gardner. The the goal is good. So they call penalties in this game, we're learning, and that's Daly's third of the game. Makes it 4-2 to two in favor of Team Shield. First we'll see what the call is. One minute for a slash. Nice, nice love tap right on the helmet from Gardner. Frankie Higgins coming on to take the draw for Team Hammer, and he's going to go up against Alexander. This should be a fun one. Higgins going to look to scoop and score. Kind of doubt Alexander will let him do it, but Higgins has done that to a lot of elite faceoff men. We've got three poles out in the field right now for this faceoff that score goals. Um, really, everyone here today can shoot. It's a nice, nice change of pace. Frisoli trying to grab the loose ball. Frisoli's third time in this game. Made it as a freshman two years ago, played as a sophomore, and now as a junior. Can he go four for four? I'd say odds are pretty good. I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> Not taking my money. Frisoli dishes out to Cheek. Oh, come on, Coach. Leave Frisoli out there. Let the boy shoot. Cheek atop the zone. Looked back towards Robbins. Spencer Robbins out of Longmeadow. One of the few Western Mass players in this game. Longmeadow fell in the state semifinal against Concord Carlisle. You know, another victim of Concord's run through the playoffs this year. Every game seemed to come down to the wire for them. Um, I think that was, that was let's, let's call it one of the easier wins. It was a whole two-goal margin yeah, of victory. I mean, I, I don't know how they did it. Game well, after game. Con but. Conquer Carlisle, you know, I'm not saying teams read uh, their press clippings, but if they did, they would have every right to be a little upset. Five writers at Boston Lacks, myself included, have five different winners out of the Division II Central East section. Not one of us picked Conquer Carlisle, and there they went. Best revenge is living well, right? And they, <laughs> they kind of, they proved we were all wrong. It was truly the most loaded region in the state, I think, where you could have made a case for any of those teams. Westwood, of, of course, Medfield. Hopkinton, another. Foxborough, that was my pick. Wayland, uh, Groton Dunstable, North Attleboro, and Walpole. They were just no easy outs. And Con Carlisle outlasted them all before falling short against Reading. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a slog. Same with Division One South with all those yep. teams. And those are the two the two big brackets. Um, we got them for another three years, I mean, until maybe there's another readjustment. In the Which, cycle. of course, there will be. <laughs> there's Robbins, a shot, and a save by Danny Hinks. Still in there for Belmont Hill. He's going to clear. Looks like Brendan Jordan to the ball. Dishes off to Antonucci of Westwood. Well, uh, this, this was the matchup. Another player Schof who... Schofield and Antonucci. Another player who needs no introduction Schofield to you, Daggett. I've coached against him for the last four years, and he's off to Providence College, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to drive him there myself. I'm <laughs> sick of seeing him. <laughs> Ex explosive goal scorer. <laughs> and another guy who's been doing it since he was a freshman. I, I couldn't be happier to see him in the rear view. He can go score on somebody else for a while. Joining a very consistent program down in Providence, the capital of Rhode Island. One of the nicest places to watch a game. I don't know if you've been down there for one. I really like their field and their setup. Well, it's only a couple miles away from my apartment, so one of these days I'm due to get over there. Kind of waiting on my own alma mater, which is in Rhode Island, to pick up varsity lacrosse at uh, URI. Start writing letters. I've, believe me, <laughs> between that and hockey, I've been writing letters since I walked out the door five years ago, four years ago. Losing track of time here. But uh, Bryant, another great school in Rhode Island, especially as far as lacrosse is concerned. Yep, Mike Pressler, been coaching there for, you know, over a decade now. Now I'm showing my age. <laughs> Remember when he was back at Duke. But they are, I mean, the guy we saw in this game last year, Marco Rourke, went into Bryant, Certainly. had an outstanding season for them. Hingham's as a freshman. finest. 
There's a rip from Daly, and that is going to elevate. I'm not sure if Hank's got a piece of it or not. It will stay Team Hammer, pardon me, Team Shield Ball. His cheek picks up, dishes to Savetti. Savetti going to Rutgers, as we had said. He'll be playing some Big Ten lacrosse. Should be able to step right in, hopefully, and contribute there. I mean, they're they're a attack based kind of high flying offense. Seems to kind of fit what he wants to do. And they have a goal horn, which I love. Big train horn that goes off. So fun to watch on TV. It's still weird seeing Rutgers in the Big Ten for all sports, but lacrosse they have certainly earned their stripes. I think football and basketball might be another story, but that's another story for another time. Just missed the playoffs by a hair the last three years in a row, trying to get over the hump over there. So out comes Varney. Could this be our first look at a goalie goal? We're going to have to wait. See, so dishes off to John Schofield, one of four sophomores playing in this game. I think that tells you all you need to know about Schofield. Uh, he had a great year. Um, I want to, you know, kind of pump his tires too much here, obviously. Another but, great uh, save by Hanks. By Hanks. Dude, we'll talk about Danny Hanks instead. I mean, <laughs> Hanks has been, you know, the backstop of those great Belmont Hill teams for years now, still showing us, you know, at these games how tough it is to score on them. Max Fields emerging for Belmont Hill. Ball popped loose. It's Cheek trying to dish to Daly, and it's going to trickle out of bounds to the far side of the field. Under a minute left to play in tonight's first quarter. Scoopable for Cole Biggins, I believe that is, out of Duxbury. And we are down a Duxbury player, Joe Gooley. All scholastic for uh, both the Globe and the Herald is absent from this game. Kevin Barney backs it up. Oof. And Dark will have a chance. I don't know if it was on camera, but that shot went over the net and through that fence back there. Someone's car might have been in a bad spot. You know, they say you're safe as long as you're not at a baseball game, but somebody might uh, need a new windshield after that. Some of these guys can sling it. Varney. Nice check. Gave out to, looks like, Dominic Carter. If I read my roster correctly. That actually Got might be Tommy Hanks. Benji's out of Rivers. Another, another save by Hanks. And now that was Martin Fullen clearing it initially. I mean, he's a guy who can score. He had three or four against Needham earlier in the year. Schofield, a bit out of sorts. That clear. It's going to wind up with Cheek. Didn't want to give it to his teammate Jama too easily. Now here's Cheek for Savetti. He deeks and on a downward angle, it is going to sail out of bounds. Hinks coming out for some contact around the crease there. I love it. Never afraid to do that. Three seconds to go on the first. Daly across the middle and scoring. He connected on that one to his teammate, Matt DeSisto. And at the end of the first quarter, that's going to come at exactly 12 minutes. It's 5-2 to two in favor of Team Shield in the dark jerseys. All right, 12 minutes down, 36 to go here in the sixth annual Boston Lax All-American game. I guess we'll take a real quick break and be back in a couple of minutes. Coming back for the start of the second quarter here. It's the sixth annual Boston Lax Net All-American game. Jake Levin alongside Daggett Morse, the defensive coach at Medfield High. It is 5-2 in favor of Team Shield, coached by Matt Rowley through 12 minutes over Team Hammer, coached by Steve Lydon and his BC high staff. It's really not the offensive showcase we expected, Daggett. No, it needed a goal at the end to, to push to 5-2. Um, both goalies showed very well, Varney and Hanks, of course. But um, the defense is, you know, a little bit here, a little sloppy on offense, and these poles can really move. But I would expect the scoring to pick up a little bit here in quarter two. These guys get the cobwebs out. It looks like Hinks is staying in for the light team. But for the dark team, we're getting our first look at Ben Catcher, the Concord Carlisle goaltender who terrorized so many teams in the Division II ranks this year and backstopped them nearly to that state title we spoke of a few moments ago. You know, seemed to specialize in overtime saves down the stretch. We made a couple against Westwood. Um, I'm not sure if Long Meadow was overtime off the top of my head. We made a wasn't, bunch of stops. Wasn't quite overtime. Bunch of stops real late there to keep the score where it was. I made the trip out there a couple time zones away, and he made a save with about a minute left that really sealed it. It was a two-goal lead, and, you know, if 
Longmeadow had scored, it wouldn't have been the end of the world per se, but you can breathe a little easier with that two-goal lead with one minute to go. Kind of. I think. Sort of. Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. Depends on the game. Well, I know you guys have been on both ends of that. There was that great comeback last year against Walpole from about four goals down with a minute to go. And then the uh, and then there was one. this year. Yes, the universe is back in balance. I think we we paid our dues on that one. <laughs> that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do tonight. How huh? we're gonna fight? <laughs> yeah, this is dished out to the middle. Looks like it was Nick uh, number eighteen there, the orange jersey. Not quite sure if he's on this roster. It's got to be Dominic, Dominic Carter from Marlboro, yeah, right? That makes a lot be. of sense. Looked, looking right at him. <laughs> Dominic Carter from Marlboro. You know, we said there's not a lot of uh, Western Mass representation. Marlboro, I guess, would technically be Central Mass. They had a good run in the Division Three Central East Tournament. They're, they're outside the, the belt there. They exactly. Count. Exactly. Here's Gene on his home turf that he's run a muck on for the last four seasons. Getting one final shot and a save by Katcher. Got jammed up. You know, normally Gene in his left hand there is trouble. Moriarty trying to clear for the dark team, and Gene came right back up with it. And nice over the head check. Make defense great again. Moriarty goes up to Aiden Carroll. He is a state champion with BC High. He had a couple of goals in that game. One player you're not seeing in this game, Maverick Woods, who had team high four goals in that game. Now he's going to Providence as well. I believe he's going to try to play some club lacrosse. I'm not, I'm not sure. It wouldn't surprise me. He's certainly good enough, though. And, you know, I'd say, I'd say uh, oh, the state championship in lacrosse was the highlight of Woods' year, but it probably wasn't based on the Super 8 winner in hockey there against Pope Francis in overtime. Great ending there. I mean, they, they were down a goal with under a minute they left, were. I think, in the third. That they were. I believe Joe Dragon tied it for there, BC. I get the nod of approval. There's a name. All name teams, certainly. The team switched Ooh. sides, if you couldn't tell. It's catcher. That's one fly on by. That was scored by Jason Child out of Needham. He is going to Boston University, only a junior. So we could very well see him in this game again next year. Needham was one of those very good teams that ran into that BC High gauntlet in the postseason. You know, D1 South loaded. Yeah. Everyone seemed to run into, you know, Hingham, BC High, you know, Duxbury as well. And uh, that, that Needham squad was very strong. Child especially, that, that's the dodge of the day so far. You know, he's the first guy to put his defenseman kind of in a blender and score. Alexander comes up with the X on a violation against the Liberty. He will dish off to Jake Erickson. Acton Boxborough's resident All-American. Acton Boxborough, they don't get enough credit for getting to the Division I title game out of the North region. They, they ended in Lincoln Sudbury's reign, after all. So they're the, the first team, really, three years there, someone took a swing at the King and didn't miss, and it was, it was Acton Boxborough. If I'm not mistaken, Lincoln Sudbury's last two losses in the postseason, and this is going to be a goal by, I believe, Jama breaking free. Lincoln Sudbury's last two losses in the postseason, 2014 and now 2018, were each against Dak and Boxborough. Bit of a rivalry there, for yeah, sure. Just a little bit. By 13, so it is Jama, the senior from Nobles, makes it 6-3, to three, favor of Team Shield. 8.28 to go, second quarter. A little bit of back and forth action. We haven't seen as much transition as we've seen in years past, but maybe they're just loosening the legs up here for us. Waiting to see the run and gun lacrosse. You figured we might see as Erickson comes up with a ground ball off the face off X. Moves away from Gene and Ludd also right in his way. Looks backwards to Luke Moriarty. Moriarty. Goes up for Erickson. Erickson towards Carter. Out of Jake Haas, Haas, I should say, out of Belmont Hill. 
We're in a bit of a cycle here. Jama going to give off to Frasoli. Back onto the field. Frasoli being guarded by Rosati from Lincoln Sudbury. For Erickson. Tries to spin away from Colburn. Loose ball is recovered by Haas. Oh, there's Rosati on the ball now. Yep. Those unmistakable Lincoln Sudbury white uniforms. Nice clean takeaway. The whole state's had to watch that for a few years. Rosati is another guy who's been good for a long time. Colburn with an acrobatic pass up field. He's looking for Bohms, who couldn't quite thread the needle to Ludd, and it's going to be out of bounds. You know, uh, for guys that haven't played together, look naturally a little bit sloppy in transition, hitting the point. Not everything's quite as crisp as it would have been a month and a half ago, but to be expected. You think about it, the most recent any of these guys could have been playing would have been June 23rd up at BU. So we're talking about two and a half weeks at this point. And those, those ISL guys a month before that, right. if not more. They're usually done around Memorial Day, yep. a little bit before that. Plenty of time off, fresh legs. Yep, and I know Sebs in years past, as well as Nobles, they've gone down to D.C. to play in the Geico National Tournament. I believe Sebs still went this year, even though Nobles won the ISL. Yep, um, not sure how those invites are exactly metered out. I think it's done fairly you know, well in advance. Right. But go down, represent the state, represent the ISL. They always show well down there. That was Hengham's Ryan Hill behind the net. For Carroll, and he scores. He goes top shelf on Hinks. And it's 7-3. to three. Carroll makes it in favor of Team Shield. And Team Shield extends it. Labeled in the corner for Carroll. If you're going to beat Hinks, you know, six yards into a corner, that thing was moving. That's really how you're going to do it. Um, can't take your stick off Carroll's hands. He's going to make you look exactly like that every time. Carroll, one of the four sophomores in this game we spoke of earlier. John Schofield out of Medfield, one of the others. Also got John Dixon from Nobles and Nate LaLiberty from Govs. That's it. You know, Dixon, another faceoff guy in the ISL, had an outstanding year. Um, turned himself into an exceptional athlete, always had quick hands. You know, very tough kid. And, you know, at this point, you're not going to catch him if he gets out running. He's kind of tough to deal with out there. Here's Antonucci. Lobs one in deep, looking for, looks like Ward. Stand corrected. That's Jack Dillon from Dover Sherburn. Antonucci rips around. He's playing in his hometown right now, just not at his home school, of course. This is a two high school town, Westwood, with the Wolverines and the Hawks. And that's what he does. Explodes up the hash, shoots it overhand, and if it's on net, it usually goes in. That's why he had... You know, 100-something points this season. He was the, the MVP of the league in what was probably unanimous in terms of a vote. Just an outstanding player. Yeah, I said it atop the broadcast. I'll say it again. The Tri-Valley League, truly one of the most underrated leagues in the state. I mean, the Catholic Conference gets its due, obviously. The Patriot League with Hingham and Duxbury at the top, followed by Usually some great Situa teams, some great Hanover teams, and apologies if I'm forgetting anyone else. Seems like I've been doing that all night, leaving out one team. But at the TVL, at the top, certainly the top half, pound for pound, right there with any league in the state. Got to shout out the DCL, of course. Um, yep. Lincoln Sudbury and Axon Boxborough. Concord Carlisle is in there, even though they're Division Two. A lot of people kind of over, overlook that. Believe Wayland as well. Wayland's a DCL team. That's another top to bottom outstanding league. Here's Terez. Terez went back for Brendan Jordan. Here's Terez. That's his teammate Quilty taking the <laughs> ball off him. Jake Quilty off for the University of Vermont. He might have something to say about that later. Quilty, Terez, and Frankie Higgins, all teammates in both lacrosse and hockey. That's how they do it in Hingham. Generally, if you're playing one, you're playing the other as well. Both outstanding programs, too. A lot of success for those guys. The ball went for a well, their, their career, you know, as freshmen, they claim the Division I state title in hockey. They get their Division II lacrosse championship as juniors. All alone down low. 
It's Jake Haas, and you can't leave him all alone down there. You know, I almost didn't believe my eyes. Coach Lydon's got them in a 10-man ride in an all-star game there. No, no wonder he's national coach of the year. <laughs> but, yeah, hang him getting to the Super 8 in hockey each of their final three seasons. This year, their first year in Division I lacrosse. They're in the essentially the state semifinal, the South sectional final. Quite a career those kids and many, many of their teammates had. You know, those guys set the culture, both those programs. Got a lot to be proud of. Got some hardware on the wall now. Just outstanding careers. And here comes Dixon. There's a goal. Dixon scores. Great call, Daggett. And it is now 9-3 to three in favor of Team a Shield. A score by John Dixon from the Nobles School. John Dixon from Nobles. Feels like we've been talking about Nobles guys a lot. That's because there's a lot of Nobles guys here, four of them in all. The ISL champs. Dixon rocking the long hair still in this heat and humidity. I could give him maybe even more props for that, you know, down to his shoulders. Especially after last week. If that, if that didn't do it for him. It's a little more uh, temperate today, I would say, and it's still 80 and humid. If we had played this game last week, we would have been in some trouble. <laughs> and we're just standing up here talking. Abbott looking to scoop up a ground ball. and Instead, it's Alexander from Franklin. Though Franklin didn't quite Shot get there in lacrosse, its baseball team won the Super 8 this year and took the state by storm in that regard. Really, I don't want to say coming out of nowhere, but a very unexpected title, I think, for the Panthers there. And we know the hockey team made the Super 8 a couple of years ago in hockey. They won the Division One title in 2016. It's another one of those... Pound for pound, great schools uh, out of the Hockamock League, which is, you know, pound for pound, one of the strongest leagues in the state. Shout out all the Franklin baseball fans that are doubtlessly listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> That's another Division One South team. Talk about how deep that bracket it is, is. Exactly. Exactly. And a Franklin Zavarian in the last four seasons, three in a row now for Zavarian. We can just set the date for next year's matchup now. Yep. I mean, June 4th, June 5th. Let's just line up and play it. That's going to trickle out of bounds. It will stay with Team Hammer. That's Lauren. Lauren from about 15 yards out. Wanted to shoot. Slides away. Well within his range at 15. Goes to Abbott. And a little sidewinder is going to get by catcher. 2.54 to go in the second quarter. It's 9-4. to four. Team Shield still leading. Will Abbott, the goal scorer. Will Abbott scoring the goal. That is maybe the first time I've seen him score low. He, seems, he likes to tuck him under the bar against us, maybe because it looks prettier and he, he knows it upsets me. <laughs> Where is Long Meadow High School? We go back to the face-off X, conveniently on the X logo here. It's variant. It's going to be Higgins against Alexander. It's a little on the nose for them to put the big X out there for us. Like, we got it. We know where it is. <laughs> Could be some changes coming to the Catholic Conference. As Malden Catholic recently announced, they're going to stop playing their league opponents in football. And one can only wonder what the next shoe to drop in that regard is. It's all coming, obviously. I mean, other than hockey, I, they haven't had a ton of success in those other sports either. Exactly. It's a small league. They'll have to add someone, though. You can't be a four-team conference and... Well, the logical solution would seem to be St. John's Shrewsbury. I know it's a little bit more of a drive, but it's, it's not like we're talking about adding Pope Francis into the league. It's, 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 it's right no, there. It's no worse than Morrissey Boulevard up to St. John's Prep. Certainly. For a 6 o'clock start. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, reminder. Certainly. We have an injury, unfortunately. Hopefully nothing too serious. Nothing worse than seeing an injury like this in an exhibition game. I think that's, that's Jack Barron for Longmeadow. I think it's 16 out there. Hate to see that. Looking for the roster, yeah. Didn't quite see what happened there. Hopefully just got just got slashed or something. 2.22 to go here in the second quarter. Yep, so well they tend to him, as we as we were saying, you know, St. John Shrewsbury may be the most logical. Obviously, that would have to be something they might be interested in. Um, right now in Division Two, in lacrosse. Um, are they Division Two for football? Yes. 
Yes, they beat North Attleboro in the Super Bowl. So actually, Division Three. Now that you Division mentioned three. it, because it was King Philip against. Um, oh, who did King Philip play in the Super Bowl this year? Could have been Redding, or was that the year before? But either way, St. John Shrewsbury, right? They're Division Three in football. Uh, Division Two in lots of other sports. They're Division One in hockey, so they would fit the mold in that regard. And yeah. uh, a thousand or so boys in that school are the same size, roughly, as Prep and BC High. You know, a little bit bigger than Zavarian. Seems like they could make it work if they wanted to. Jack Barron up uh, with some help, but looks like he's okay. I think he wants to drive the golf cart himself, and then he'll slide over. So I'll uh, let the kid drive it. Keep an eye on his status. He's a junior from Longmeadow. He can play both attack and midi. He's taking face-offs at times for them as well. Um, not sure how much he did this year, but the year before he took a lot of them. Kind of a, a jack-of-all-trades. We'll keep you apprised to his status as it becomes available. You know, there are several uh, small leagues in Massachusetts that appear to be on the brink of, you know, extinction, extinction, I should say. The old Colony League is a three-team league right now, Barnstable, BR, Dartmouth. Are they going to merge with the big three, the Brockton, uh, New, New Bedford, Durfee League, the Fall River? Could be something. Not major lacrosse ramifications there, but nevertheless, this catcher scoops up a ball. Almost trickled through there for a goal. And here comes Camphausen, another guy you don't want to see running downfield. Scored a goal on us in that playoff game. At Camp least one, actually. Camphausen got knocked down by another Medfield playoff opponent in Will Abbott. You know, Camphausen's a guy, I think they had him listed for 72 cause turnovers this year. You see a lot of players with, the, with that number and, you know, kind of raise your eyebrows. Not with him. They could have said 82, and I would have believed it. I mean, he just hunts guys all over the field during the regular season. Right, you never know which numbers might be a little bit inflated, yeah. embellished, whatever. Right, it, certainly believable with him. His aren't, that's for sure. He is that good. There's Quilty dancing around Abbott's going to let it fly, and that is a save made Off the shot by, Quilty, stop by, by Mason Fitzgerald Fitzgerald. now in the game for Team Hammer. Fitzgerald, the Cohasset backstop, led the Skippers to their first state title since 2014, their sixth title in program history. Great year for them. Great year for him, backstopping that, that group. A junior on a very senior-laden team. It's not a big roster Cohasset has by any means. I mean, there's only about 450 kids at the high school. Ooh, and that one's able to sneak by wide as Ryan Hill was in the vicinity. 15 seniors on that Cohasset team that this is what the head coach, James Bowden, talked about after the game. That a lot of those kids that won the title a couple weeks ago were there when Cohasso won their last title, 2014. They were all eighth graders. They stormed the field, and they wanted to do the same thing uh, over the next couple of years, and they didn't get a chance until they were seniors four years later. It all came full circle for them. Good storybook ending for those guys. Well-earned as well. Yeah, similar to the BC High. I felt like the years of hard work was a coronation of sorts for Cohasset. Not to say Redding's title wasn't. Yeah, Redding as well. You know, in Division One North for the last four years, came kind of back home to Division Two where they had been before, and right. of course immediately put a trophy on the wall. Ground ball scooped up by Cam Martin out of St. Sebastian's. Nice outlet. Flies up to Jama. We're getting down to 10 seconds to go here oh. in the quarter. And that is going to slide on by. Jama with a rip that got by Fitzgerald. Goal comes at 11 minutes, 51 seconds. It's 10 to 4 in favor of Team Shield. High to low on the run in that bottom corner. There's nothing any of these goalies could have done. Nothing any goalie could have done about that one. Should be time for one more draw before we hit the half. It'll be Liberty against Alexander, the same battle that started this game. It's been common throughout the night. And it's Liberty. He keep it himself, scoop and score. There he is from about 10 yards out. It was popped free. I think DeSisto got a piece of it. That'll do it for the first half. It's pretty much all Team Shield 10-4 here. 
see if they can't regroup at halftime here. You know, this this was, I think, the score last year, and it closed right up in the second half. Let's see how these guys adjust after a little halftime chat. All right, he's Daggett Morse. I'm Jake Levin. We will take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, Daggett, let's talk a little bit about Bruce Lurch, whom this game is being played for, uh, in a sense, these last several years and his great contributions to the Massachusetts lacrosse community. We'll be back in about five minutes. With Sean Morris, we'll present two very important awards. The first one, as sponsored by Boston Lax, will be presented the Bruce Lurch Player of the Year Award. This year award will be given to a senior from Boston College High School who's currently down preparing for his freshman year at North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bruce Lurch Player of the Year Award goes to Will Bowen. And ladies and gentlemen, the Boston Lax Coach of the Year. Not only will he be the Boston Lax Coach of the Year, but he was recently named USA Today's High School Lacrosse Coach of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, from Boston College High School, Steve Lydon. Back for the start of the second half here of the 2018 sixth annual Boston Lax Net All-American Game. Jake Levin alongside Daggett Morse, head defensive coach at Medfield High of the Warriors. And it is 10-4 in favor of Team Shield. That's the dark jersey team coached by Matt Rowley and the staff at Nobles here through 24 minutes of action. Team Hammer coached by Steve Lydon. They're uh, looking up right now, but Steve Lydon picked up just a little bit more hardware as if he needed any more at the half. He was named the Boston Lax Net Coach of the Year. Obviously well-deserved. Um, I'm not sure he has any more room for any more <laughs> hardware there. He's going to have to build a bigger shelf. USA Today High School Head Coach of the Year, the Division I State Championship for his team. Yeah, he's going to need a bigger shelf, no question about that. So, Daggett, while we were gone, we uh, ta it was mentioned a little bit over the uh, PA system here about what this game means and who it's for. And that's Bruce Lurch, uh, the former GM of Boston Laxnet, as we do have a goal in the meantime from Jason Child, his second of the game. And so I unfortunately never had the chance to meet Bruce. Uh, we would have our online interactions, of course, in this age of Twitter. Uh, unfortunately, I never got to meet him or got to work for him, but... Of course, you did be in this lacrosse community for a lot longer than I have. Uh, how cool is it that Bruce's memory has been able to live on through this game and shows no signs of slowing down. It really just gets bigger and bigger every year. Well, Bruce would be terribly embarrassed, which is just <laughs> the guy he was. But everybody, I mean, I mean, you said it, knowing him, knowing online, he he knew everyone online. If you didn't meet him in person, you would have had a ton of you know Twitter interactions, email interactions. Uh, he saw probably more games than anybody else, did the voiceovers, did the highlights, and was as, about as plugged in to this scene as you could ever possibly hope to be. Knew the kids, and mo most importantly, knew it was about the kids. And there was no hint of ego in anything he ever did. Um, used to make me nervous because he used to talk to me nights before big games and know my game plan just from knowing our team so well. That used to stress me out. Um, but always a guy you could trust to have a great back and forth with. And, you know, only the right things would, would make it into print that would, you know, help guys out their career and all that. Just an, an awesome guy. I mean, still think about it once or twice a year, you know, something I'd like to tell him. Um, it's hard to believe it's been, you know, as long as it has. Right. Fall of 2015, I believe, unfortunately, Bruce has gone way too soon at the age of 42. Also did work for the Boston Herald. Helped out with uh, the sports coverage there, in addition to the high school beat. Did a lot with girls hockey. Chipped in with the Patriots every now and again, and he uh, he is missed, certainly still. And uh, like you said, I have heard that before. He would be very embarrassed. <laughs> that, uh, Horribly embarrassed. <laughs> We're going to have something to answer oh, for, you know, as, as we all kind of see him again. <laughs> He would certainly be a fan of the lacrosse on the field here today. There's Jama cocking and firing, and Mason Fitzgerald comes up with another save. Mason Fitzgerald from Cohasset dishes out. 
Made that save look routine. It was a little bit harder than it looked. That ball was moving. In goal from Foxborough High School for Team Shield during the dark uniforms. As we just heard, Jake Adesh is in goal for the Team Shield, the dark jerseys. Adesh off for Hofstra University down on Long Island. In Uniondale, I believe, is the name of the town. You know, his coach, Matt Noon, Long Island guy, thrilled to be sending a player, you know, back home to the island. He would say Strong Island. I certainly would not. <laughs> Makes some sense. So, Hofstra, not too terribly far from where you played your college lax up at Hartwick. I know it's upstate New York, but, you know, probably within a 100-mile radius, I suppose. So, uh, Hop's giving a jump to our, our little piece of turf in upstate, uh, kind of southwest of Albany. Hofstra, much better lacrosse program. It's a dash. Makes a save there. Still waiting on our first long stick goal here. Dished out for Cameron Rosie from Melrose. It was a really a historical year for the Melrose Red Raider program. Getting recognition from not just Boston Lax, but from the Globe and Herald in terms of a ranked program, a top 20, 25 ranked program. That hadn't really happened there in quite some time, if ever, in the very challenging Middlesex League that's been run by Redding, and you have some other great teams in there, a la Winchester, and uh, good to see Melrose getting the recognition it deserves, and Cameron Rosie here to represent. Yeah, no fluke either. This isn't a one-year deal for them. They're going to be around for a while. That they're building from within there. they got a strong core. You know, they're they're going to be a named team for a while here out of D2 North. It was a hang him on Cohasset play there. It's all South Shore crime as Ryan Quilty, uh, pardon me, Jake Quilty was stuffed by Mason Fitzgerald. This ball is going to trickle out of bounds. It will be dark ball. A little more than halfway remaining here in the third quarter. It's 7 5 in favor of Team Shield. A dash. Could he be the answer to our goalie goal conundrum? Are we going to get one tonight? He threads the needle for. I believe that was Benji's. A save made by Fitzgerald. That's Dom Carter. My apologies. Out of Marlboro. All these light jerseys. Run out by Tommy Joyce, but making the good unselfish play, head manning the ball. Tommy Joyce. With the short shorts on, as always. <laughs> Skies out, thighs out. BC High Eagle. He is playing at Harvard next year. And for the next four, part of that just epically strong defensive unit for the Eagles with Will Bowen, who oh. we also heard at the half of the Do not tell him this is an exhibition game. Goodness. That was another Boston College High School defender, Folan, taking the shot. You know, had a bunch of goals this year. Trying to get us on the board. <laughs> How many uh, defender goals usually get in a game for Medfield. If it's if the game's at hand, is that something you guys encourage to let happen, or is it seen almost as a sign of showboating? You know, Coach Eisen might, might listen to this, so absolutely not. We never encourage any of that. Um, it's got to be a function of transition. We don't we don't normally have a lot of them, to be honest. Uh, get the ball to the guys that are paid to score. It's kind of how we look at it. Dash comes up with another save during that sequence. Way back in his own end. Flies it over for Rosie on the clear. Rosie directing traffic. Goes up to Moriarty. Moriarty from about 20 yards out. Moves to 10 yards out behind the net. Flings it up towards Alexander Savetti, rather. Spins around and scores. That's going to split through the five hole of Fitzgerald. Makes it 11 to 5 now. In favor of Team Shield. I don't think he was waiting for him to shoot that lefty. Caught him kind of by surprise with the pirouette and the right handed finish down low. And with that, we're going to have Alex Ganey enter the game for Team Hammer, the last of the goalies on that roster. Alex Ganey out of St. Seb's. He's a senior. Not playing all that far from his home turf. It's only a, about an exit, I believe, up of I-95. Located in scenic Needham, Massachusetts. Yes, of course. He lives in Westwood. From Westwood, we are told, so 
And a sense on his home turf, and yet another save for Adesh. Well, Ryan Killian, uh, the editor-in-chief of Boston Laxnet, told me at one point in the regular season he thinks the best goalie in the MIAA might be Adesh, or might have been Adesh this season. And uh, he's certainly living up to that hype tonight. Living up to it tonight with the season Foxborough had, there's a lot to say about him. Um, lots of low-scoring games when you run into the Foxborough Warriors. Mm -hmm. Foxborough and Franklin always seem to have a fun game in Hockamock League play. For the white team. Matt Noon, the head coach of Fox Pro, spoke about him a few moments ago. And Lou Verrocchi always does a great job at Franklin. Two guys that have been doing it a long time. Two of the guys who are the most fun to speak with after the game, win or lose. Especially after a win. <laughs> Antonucci hobbling a little bit after that shot. Hope he's all right. Looks like Ludd took a tumble, and we're going to have our just our second flag of the game. I think that was Andrew Johnson. Sir, for what? Outrageous. Andrew Johnson, junior from Nobles. So a 30-second hold. We haven't had any egregious calls or egregious penalties taken. We had the one-minute slash, now a 30-second hold. So good to see the kids are not... Coaches can count. You know what I mean. Playing within themselves, I suppose. Yeah, you know, when the game's played at a high level, there's not a lot of, you know, high hits or big hits, really. So it's, a, it's been a clean game so far. I'm dating myself a little bit here, but you remember the Pro Bowl hit, uh, the late, great Sean Taylor on Brian Mormon, the punter? I, I, I can picture it. <laughs> can't believe Mormon got up. I haven't seen anything like that in this exhibition tonight, and that, that like is for that. the best. Oh. That is certainly for the best. We're off and running. Poles in transition. Could this be the one? Maybe not, but there's Aiden Carroll up looking to Savetti, and he's denied by Ganey. Wow. Pushed in the crease. All right, Fran, what a call. A little less than four minutes to go in the third quarter. The sixth annual Boston Lax Net All-American game. Aiden Carroll, the Zavarian end zone, curls back out looking to the middle. To Savetti, and he goes down low and slides it by Ganey, and that's going to make it 12-5. 3.43 to go in the third. A little bit unsettled after the penalty kill. These guys having trouble marking up, you know, going back to settled defense. Not a surprise with teammates you haven't played with. Savetti's been out there almost the entire game, it seems. He doesn't want to come off this field his final high school game. And he makes a lot happen when he's got the ball on his stick. That's his, his second goal in about two minutes. He's had some other good shots here. And we've talked a lot about some of these teams or some of these players who play multiple sports. Savetti also a member of the Franklin High hockey team that did win that Division I state championship in 2016, back his sophomore season, and made a couple of other spirited runs the following years. A little sloppy and white here on offense. And this is going to be dark ball. And that's Andrew Johnson. Johnson to Schofield. It's going to bounce off him, but he regains his bearings and goes back to a dash. He'll say he lost that one in the sun. <laughs> Is it safe to assume there's been a play, at least one player from Medfield in this game all six years? Is there's a goal scored. Goal, scored by Spencer Number Robbins. four, Spencer Robbins out of Long Meadow. We go back here, Daggett. Uh, we've been fortunate to have a lot of very talented guys, so I think we've had at least one. Um, and you know, speaking of Robbins, Long Meadow's always had a couple guys in this game. You can you can list on on kind of both hands here the couple of programs that you've seen are always represented: Duxbury, Lincoln, Sudbury, Hingham. You know, it's a, it's a regular cast of characters, you know, out of the MIAA for the most part. Right. That makes sense. And, you know, not too dissimilar in the ISL, I would say, with St. Seb's, Nobles, Belmont Hill. Culture and coaching. Yep. And, you know, the, the guys running those programs are, are excellent. The culture in those places leads to it. You know, big lacrosse towns, big lacrosse schools. So it's no surprise that, you know, a lot of those teams are represented often. There goes the shot. Two minutes, 50 seconds left, and it is 13-5 in favor of Team Shield. 
So another penalty. It's going to be a one-minute slash, I believe, was the call. So we'll get another look at a man-up scheme. Haven't seen a ton. Well, the, the big shooter there, Loring, number 10 in white. Um, he might already be in range at the box line. That was Colin Almeida from Falmouth starting it, gets it back. Top the box out to the left, Almeida with some space and misfired yeah, just a bit outside. Just pushed wide. Jack Dillon to the ball from Dover Sherburn. Is that net regulation size or what? Lauren, one of those heavy hitters, and there's a rip from Antonucci and a save by Adesh. Great outlet from the seat of his pants, too. 30 seconds up the penalty. That's DeSisto. That DeSisto. Tommy Joy's going to take a run here. Killing some clock. Here he comes. They're offsides. There's seven guys on offense. <laughs> Mr. Official, sir. There we go. You know, that might be the first, I don't want to say chirp, but the first sound I've heard from a parent towards an official tonight. <laughs> Certainly uh, one, one, thing, one noticeable difference between an exhibition game and a... Uh, a tournament game, certainly. If you had 155 in the third quarter for that, you win. <laughs> Here's Ryan Hill from Hingham. Goes to Svetti instead of back towards his teammate Quilty. Maybe they'll connect again momentarily. Svetti wrapping around, and he's going to miss as he shoots Svetti downward. Aiden Carroll in the vicinity. Carroll's going to go on Tommy Joyce right now if he wants. More teammate on teammate crime. They've done that before. Uh, he's going to be, of gonna be a nice guy and pass it off. What a teammate. Savetti and Colburn engage. Dishes off for Carroll, and that's a shot that's going to sail wide, but there off the doorstep, Ryan Hill to pick it up for Hingham. Hill around a screen set by Savetti. Colburn assumes duty. He's able to slip away, surveying his options. Goes back to Savetti. Savetti can curl off of Colburn. Going Good. a little higher in the box. Good double team there from Joyce. A nice Carol save God, by save. Ganey. By and that ball is going to land. Looks like Chris Campbell from Shrewsbury High came up with it. We talked about St. John Shrewsbury a little bit earlier in terms of the Potential Catholic Conference replacement, but there's our first look at Shrewsbury High. Crosstown rival. Yes. Shrewsbury, St. John, Shrewsbury. Great mm -hmm. games. Won a Division Three state championship in ice hockey this season, did the Colonials. They beat previously unbeaten Hanover for the title. Well, it was certainly a stunner. Now to 20 seconds to go here in the third. That's Johnson for Hill. Hill with Colburn, jumps away from Colburn, finds Carroll. Carroll slashing Five, through the middle, four, runs into some contact. Three, Almeida two, comes up with the, gr one, the ground nine, ball, loose ball. And quarter. that'll do it for the third. Our score, 13-5 in favor of Team Shield over Team Hammer. It is a 13-5. Waiting for the start of the fourth quarter here, 13 to five. Astute. Still waiting on our first long stick goal and our first goalie goal. Give the people what they want. Dylan Gardner and Higgins upfield. Might we get it? Oh, we're still looking for it. So close. Bohm's pressing the near pipe here. Looking for Higgins. Child to clean it up on the back side. The That's the third goal tonight for Needham's Jason Child, Jason headed Child. to BU. Of Needham High School with the goal. As we figure out the scoreboard here, that goal would have made it 13 to six. 
There we go. We got it. We've all had some time off, including the clock operator. Ball kicking around to Desh will pick it up. Over to Moriarty. That is Martin Folk. Correction. Luke Moriarty. Quildy with the ball on the far side on Geiger. Overhand shot just wide. Great feed through all the way to Frizzoli. Trying to help us out and get the poles on the board. Quilty operating from the wing. Underneath. Too easy for Ganey. Alex Ganey bound from Johns Hopkins. Plays high school for St. Sebastian's. He's going to gobble those ones up. Geiger the other way, shot just wide. Child will pick it up, re-enter. Sean Nizelik waiting for him, playing on his home field. A moan from the crowd, but a stick to the head. Get We're going to get one a one-minute one slashing, slashing call here on Nizelik. You're going to... You're going to do the boy like that on his home field? That's just disrespectful. White going on the man up here. Don't you know Mr. Doyle knows the ball penalties against the varying kids in this field? Release time is 8.57 on that penalty. 8.57 is the release time. Team Hammer and the White certainly could use a goal here, close this gap a little bit further. Child, the no-look bid to Sam Jean, just a little bit high. A little bit of razzle-dazzle on the man up. Cole Biggins with the ground ball. Marshall Terrace looking for an outlet there, a little bit high. Desh will pick it up as the penalty time runs down. Rejected. Five left in the penalty. Three, two, one released. We're all even here. Dylan Gardner with the ground ball to Will Abbott. Not a guy you want to see running in transition. See if he pushes it all the way home. Good unselfish I look. Goal by Sam Jean. Abbott to Jean makes it 13 to 7. Team Shield still leading Team Hammer. Settle in for the faceoff here, 13-7. Team Shield over Team Hammer. Yet to see Higgins win the ball forward to himself, which is a surprise. He spent four years doing that to everybody. Ground ball by Nick Loring there. Operating on Kyle Camphausen. Situates David Murray in the left hand. Shot. shot Good goal. Score. Dash couldn't get to that Number one. Dave Murray, Dave Murray for a situate. To 13, to eight. 13 to 8 in the midst of a three goal run. Team Hammer clawing back into it here. And Catcher coming back in to goal now for the Team Dark Jerseys, Team Shield. Adesh exits, probably the leader in saves. 
Had him for six or seven good saves there. Hammer comes up with the ground ball. Picked up by White. Flag is down. Good slash to the head. Flag Saying hello. Again. And the whistle. 7.48 left here. We have a slashing one-minute personal foul. Daggett. Sorry. The least time will be 6.48. About that, we are back, though. Welcome back. <laughs> team Shield. So it looks like I missed a couple of goals here, huh? For uh, Team Shield, Team Coach, Hammer, rather. Coach Lydon might kick you right back off this broadcast in <laughs> the midst of a three-goal run. All right. This is the lacrosse we expected to see today, a little more of an offensive showcase. And it'll be Team Hammer again setting up shop in the attacking zone. And they've gone to Will Frizzoli with a short stick to be the defensive midfielder on this man down. I almost want to see him pick it up just to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, give him the ball. There it is. Go for Zola with the short stick, everybody. I don't see that every day, if ever. It There's Rosie. Give over to Daly, who wreaked havoc in the first quarter. Daly out of Tabor. Had a hat trick in the first quarter. Beats the double team by Almeida. Nice unselfish look. Goes out to Haas. And a nice save by Ganey. Ganey's second or third save already since he's been you know, in the net this quarter. Helping them close that gap. Five seconds on the penalty. Sends it over to Three, Nick Loring. Two, one. We're all Couldn't even. quite connect upfield with Child. And that would have made things very interesting with a little more than six and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. Cheek to Haas. Shot score. Deeked by going down low. Snaps the run. It's 14 to 8 now, Team Dark. Ganey tried to get there with the split. It hurt me to watch. I don't know how he can get down there, but it's not quite quick enough. Savetti going to take this draw, posed by Frankie Higgins. It's a six-goal game with six and a half to go. Well, you know, everything's been coming up Steve Lydon and BC High this year. Would you really put it past him to orchestrate a comeback here? I would not. Would not surprise me one bit. Need to start winning on the draw, and that's step one. Will Abbott tries to fling it across his body back towards Brendan Jordan of Govs. Frankie Higgins loitering at the center of the offense, trying to get himself <laughs> free. Jordan. Oh, we're going to have it. Make the one more. Oh, he's open. Tried to sky for Abbott. Higgins. Cross for Antonucci. Antonucci rips in a save by a catcher. A backhander by Jordan and catcher. Standing strong again, keeping this 14 to 8. Up to the challenge. That first one, you know, on Antonucci, they saw each other in the playoffs. You know, it's probably had a few in that game as well. Camphausen, he's going to push it, split the double. Trying Try and split the double. Tried to split Frankie Higgins, cut him off to the right. Higgins wasn't having it. Haas for Cheek for his teammate Jama. Jet Jama. One of the very best names and best players in the ISL for the last several seasons. Gives it over to Jake Quilty. Quilty trying to work around Abbott. Abbott unrelenting. So Quilty dishes back to Jama. He'll look to set a screen and instead goes off to the right. Higgins right on top of him. Dishes for Daly. Daly curls away from Cheek for a Haas. And I believe that was intercepted cleanly by Ganey, who will clear it to Rosati, or who will try to ignite the clear, I should say. Crafty little shot there, a little, little lever shot, put it on cage, force Ganey to make a stop. Long pass intended. 
It's up for Jack Geiger, and it's going to wind up staying with White anyways. Geiger of the Reading Rockets. Child looking for his fourth goal. And for Child, Child and all scholastic in addition to his All-American duties. Shot's going to trickle well wide and going the other way. Goalie run out, love to see it. It's Antonucci looking for Dylan on that last shot. Those two teams played a 16-13 a game at Dover Sherburn early in the year. That was real fun to watch. Both those guys on the board quite a bit in that one. And Jama jams on the brakes and now runs away from Geiger. Shot, shot save Ganey. Too easy for Ganey. Telegraphed there. Daly comes up with a loose ball on an errant clear. Daly. Bounce quiet, pass. Quiet since the first. Goes over to Cheek. Cheek for Jama is going to let it rip and Ganey. Standing strong makes the save, but the rebound right to Haas. And that's too easy for him. 3.24 to go. It's 15 to 8. Haas cleaning up the trash in front of the cage, making Coach Bombay proud. Fifteen to eight. We can probably rule out overtime in this one. It is more probable than not there, Daggett. Oh, now that we said it, look out. <laughs> so, Daggett, I know you are uh, very up to date on all of these teams and who's graduating and who's coming back. Is Sam Jean rips one a for a team hammer? So, my, my segue Sam here, Jean. basically. Who is the way too early Daggett Morse favorites in Divisions 1, 2, and 3 for next spring? Oh, boy. You can give me, you can give me a slew of teams. You can give me a group of two or three. I'll let you. Get me in trouble here. Get me in trouble. You know, I think Division 1, people looking at that defense graduating from BC High and thinking they're going to be down are, be, are going to be very disappointed. Sure. BC High is going to be right there. Hingham is deep. They'll be right there. We know Lincoln Sudbury is going to be in the mix in the north, and obviously Acton Voxborough has something to say about that. If you made me pick one, I say BC repeats. Very interesting. They're, that would be, what, their fourth or fifth straight appearance? The, I believe four straight appearances in the title game. Is Daly back on the score sheet for Team Shield, 16-7. to Well, BC High, they return Aiden Carroll, so that, that's a pretty good starting point. So, you know, four straight appearances. I'm really going out on a limb picking them to go back there. That's that's a real dangerous pick. Uh, Division two. Now, I know you might want to abstain from Division two, which I, would, which I would understand. The Rockets return. You know, Tobin's an exceptional player. That that entire town is very bought into their process and how they do things. So they're going to be, you know, right there. Uh, hopefully, you know, if we, if we work hard, we might have something to say. We'll see. Okay. You know Long Meadow, St. John, Shrewsbury, in the central and the west part of the states are always strong. It'll be a dogfight like it always is, you know. Way too early to tell. Of course, of course. This is the way too early projection. The way so too early projection. We got another flag, meanwhile. Zantanucci has to get away from Frasoli. And, you know, Division Three, Coasset Dover Sherburn until further notice. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to upset some, some other towns in the central part of the state, but I don't really care. It's, it's it, Coasset and Dover Sherburn. It is factually correct. You know, Grafton will have something to say about that. I guess except as well, for, good ex programs. Right, except for 2017 when we had Grafton and uh, Ipswich who beat them. Ipswich as well last year. Game. But other than that, it has been the Cohasset and Dover Sherburn show. As far as I know, every single year this decade. If you're going to make me pick early, those are the two picks. Yeah. Again, very safe choices. <laughs> Please direct all complaints about that segment to bostonlax.net. <laughs> Care of Jake Levin. We will certainly be making our picks at some point next year. What a stop. A nice initial save made by Varney, but crashing the net is Terez, who knows a thing or two about crashing the net from his hockey days. Makes it 16 to 9. Varney, great save on the deflected shot initially. What an, an awkward job to have to reset there and make that stop. Terrible luck. It bounced right to Terrace. Maybe the easiest goal of his career. <laughs> 
Well, 16 to 10 now. We, we missed a goal. <laughs> Somebody did. There, there's some grumbling about the score. Frankie Higgins scoops and scores. You knew it was coming. Well, he scooped. He Didn't, scooped. He tried to. He should have scored. Scoop and score. There's Almeida. And that's going to go wide. Sam Jean will track a ball down as he has a thousand times in his career. In the end zone here at the Hawk Bowl. With Schofield in defense. Does a good job. See that matchup off. next season. Does a good job cutting off his angle. The Hawks are on the schedule Ooh. again for the Warriors. A nice shot behind the net, behind the head by Almeida. Sverians playing midfield again next year? Believe so. Love it. We, traditional game on April break. Probably should have had John on, on Sam this past year. Gene with the game winner to beat us here 10 9. So if Zavarian beat BC High, and you guys only lost by Zavarian to a goal. I lost to BC High by a goal, too. So we were good at that this year. Hopefully next year we'll win by a goal. <laughs> and there's Robbins for Long Meadow. Under two minutes here. We're running out of time for a goalie or a long stick. Let's make it happen, people. Holding out hope, but Robbins is going to bounce one through Ganey's wickets. By Spencer Robbins. Minute 19 to go. 17 to 10. It's a good football score. I think we all owe a debt of gratitude. Wickets is the word of the broadcast thus far. They've been here all night. Thank you, Sean. Thank you to your entire staff. We appreciate all the work that you've done on behalf of these young athletes. That's for Sean Morris. He is the owner of Boston Laxnet, that ovation, the former professional player from Marshfield originally. Shout out to the boss man, putting this all on for us, getting it all together. Of course. Wouldn't be possible without him or Ryan Killian, the editor-in-chief, now in his second year in that role. And he's been involved for much longer, of course, but he is done. And there's Nate the Liberty, a scoop and score. Second of the Gets it by Devin Varney. Yeah, we'd be nowhere without Ryan Killian. Still got time for a few more goals here. Coming fast and furious at the end of the night. Looking for that goalie goal. Still waiting. Yeah. Anyone who played the prop bets is getting nervous. <laughs> You want a rock, paper, scissors here. Love it. <laughs> Liberty. Beats beat Alexander on the draw any way he can. Up Good for Gene. <laughs> for Almeida. Almeida away from DeSisto. A shot. Nice save by Devin Varney. And Varney makes another stop. Varney's been minutes, solid in net all night long. Played extremely well Shot in the first wide. quarter. Helping Team That's Shield out to an early vi early lead it has not relinquished. Nice of Almeida to give him a nice, nice easy one to end one there. <laughs> Stick side high from the parking lot. Here's Daly, one of the other stars of this game. Snuck that one in. Apparently we've got a goal, Daly. Somehow got by Ganey, and Daly looked like his wrist might might have been a little dinged up there. Walking a little gingerly there. I'm still not entirely sure when he shot that ball. Eighteen to eleven. So I think uh, the over under we were talking was thirty six and a half. So. Th 36 and a half was coming the, was the a little under. Surprising. I know in years past, the uh, the under has been a formality. Or the over, I should say, has been a formality. Life's too short to bet the under. <laughs> Frankie Higgins can't quite come up with a draw. It's John Dixon for Nobles. There we go. The, give the people what they want. Here comes Varney. We want the goalie goal. Oh, get right back. Varney there scores! Varney, a game of give and go with Hayden Keep Cheek. Going. Varney puts it home. The first goal of the 
Makes it 19 to 11 with 12 seconds left in the game. That's what the fans wanted. That's what we wanted. Plenty of time to spare. 12 whole seconds. So is Ganey going to try to match him now if Team Hammer can win this draw? He's got to take off if he gets a chance. Give him a rebuttal. <laughs> This is likely to be the last draw of the game, barring something crazy. Alexander wins it. Alexander rips it. Ganey went wide. Time for one shot. Find the pole. Alexander tried to shove a change up by Ganey. Couldn't do it. So our final score is 9 2 and 11. Team Shield over Team Hammer. Head coach Matt Rowley and his staff at Noble and Greenow over head coach Steve Lydon at his BC High Lacrosse staff. So Pat Daly is going to be the MVP. The fans in front of us love it. Big cheer. <laughs> the entire Daly clan. Well, dag it with that, the 2017-2018 lacrosse season is officially in the books. It's been a long road, but we're finally done. We're all zero and zero. Great, <laughs> great game to watch with these guys today. You know, looking forward to hitting the off season, maybe hitting the beach. <laughs> hitting the beach, hitting the golf course. And now we wait for the third or so week in March, barring another crazy winter, maybe the fourth week in March. It, it'll, it'll be 50 and sunny until it snows two days before tryouts. Yep, exactly. You heard it here Exa first, friends. Exactly. That's pretty much what happened verbatim this past year. And uh, all that weather did result in the summer uh, getting shortened a little bit. The championships weren't until June 23rd. Very late in the game. Well, anyways, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight on Boston Laxnet. Uh, for Daggett Morris, Ryan Killian, and everyone, and Sean Morris, of course, and everyone else down below, we thank you for tuning in. I'm Jake Levin. Until March.